Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Do More PLC Easy PLC Box Selection Program. Now the Machine Simulator or MS is part of the Easy PLC software suite. It has many built-in machines that can be programmed. The Box Selection or Camera Management and Distribution is one of these machines. It will read barcodes from the boxes and send them to different exit ramps. The Do More PLC uh, designer PLC simulator will be used to program this virtual machine. Now using the Do More designer PLC software, we will be connecting the simulator to the box selection machine. This will be done via um, the Modbus TCP or Ethernet for communications. Using the five steps for programming development, we will show how this is programmed. So let's get started. Uh, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So we have our machine simulator up here on the on my screen and we'll just hit start. And you will see that um, the machine simulator has a demo mode for built-in machines. So over here, you'll actually see the demo mode here. By selecting the machine, you'll also see that we have a write-up of exactly what will happen with that um, machine. So it basically says in the camera management and distribution, uh, it uses the photo cells and cameras located at each section uh, station to read the barcodes of the boxes in order to send them through the different exit ramps. The box with ID number one will be sent to the first exit, with two will be the second and three will be the third. So if we actually then go into the demo mode, we can actually um, look at that. And you can see here, we are in the demo mode right here. So as the boxes get scanned, we can actually see which one it is and it goes to the appropriate one and the corresponding exit ramp will then get triggered. We can view the IO here and we can see exactly what happens. In our analog input, this is the results of our cameras. We have our three cameras here. So this uh, uh, demo mode and the, is part of the, the first step and that's defining the task. And that's step one of our five steps of program development. Now, if we take and we uh, zoom around this uh, environment here, you will see that we have our control panel And that control panel actually will indicate our uh, stops, reset, and stop uh, inputs and lights. We also have our uh, amount going through conveyor number one, two, and three. And if we just uh, zoom out a little bit here, you will see to the right-hand side, we also have a door that we can open. So once we open the door, everything then closes or stops and close the door again. And then it resumes, which is actually incorrect because we have to start it again. So we're going to correct some of those even on the demo mode. So after we finally uh, determine what we want, then the next thing is uh, IO. So define the inputs and outputs of our box selection. So let's exit out of here since we know exactly what we're doing now. We will go and um, we will start this in start mode now. Now in start mode, what you'll notice is that we have no PLC connected. There's our uh, reset. Uh, we have our IO drivers and we have our view IO link. So there's my view IO link and here what I can do is I can actually um, start and stop each of these to in indicate what's actually happening. Start, start the button light, stop button light, etc. So what we do is we fully define what each input and output is going to take. Next, what we want to do is we want to uh, develop the logical sequence of operation. So this is one of the most important steps to actually do. 
and it's a we usually use a flowchart or sequence table and we have to fully understand the process that needs to be controlled. We must answer all the following questions like what happens when electrical power or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when the inputs and outputs fail? Do we need redundancy? This step is where you can save a lot of work by understanding everything about the operation. It will help prevent you from continuously rewriting the PLC program logic. Knowing all of these answers up front is vital in the development of your PLC program. So even as we looked at the demo and started looking at the process, what we'll do is we will say that when uh, what we have is if we look at our control panel first. And we'll just zoom out on there. Okay, our control panel has three lights, the start, the reset, and the stop. What we're going to do is we're going to light the start when everything's okay to run. Then they can uh, run it, we'll hit a start button. If the stop button is then hit, or, or when it's running, then the stop button light will then light up. Once we stop it again, and we have numbers on our values here, we'll light up the reset so when it tells the operator, look, you can actually hit that reset. If we have our emergency stop, what will happen is all of these lights will turn off, indicating that it's emergency stop has been hit. If we have a door open, then what we'll see is the uh, red light here will start flashing. That's what we want to happen to indicate to the operator that, look, your door is open or a door is ajar so that you cannot run the machine. Once the door has been corrected, you will then have to hit the start again to continue. So that is the operation. And if we look here, what you'll notice is that we have boxes coming in. We will start that uh, camera. This barcode will be red. And then if it's for this output, it will actually turn and put that down that exit conveyor. So that's actually the, um, the third step in the logical sequence. So again, you're going to spend a lot of time in this step trying to define exactly what has to happen. Then the next one, or the next step is going to be the development of the PLC program, which is step number four. So if we actually call up our uh, do more designer, there we go. We have all of our inputs and outputs and they're mapped to our Modbus locations. So we have our, um, the first thing we'll do is take a look at starting our conveyor belt, so which is our first output. So we have to have the start signal and we don't have to have the stop, the machine door open or the emergency stop. And then we will start that uh, conveyor belt. Now, if the, um, and we start that conveyor belt with a set instruction. Then with that, uh, then we reset that when we have a stop button, a machine door open, or emergency stop button. So again, if that resets, then we have to go back and we have to start again in order to start this process once again. So that makes sense now. Then what we do is when we don't have our conveyor belt and we don't have our machine door open and we don't have emergency stop, then our start button light will be hit so that we indicates to the operator we can now start this machine. Now when the conveyor belt is on, our start stop button light will be on. If our conveyor is off and our door is open, then we use the one second to pulse so we can actually determine that our door is open and we have a flashing uh, red light there. Now on our reset button, you can see we have to have the stop mode. Our door is not open, our emergency stop is not active, and our conveyors are greater than zero, then we will output our reset button light. Okay. Then if we have our reset button light and we hit the reset button on the leading edge, what we do is put zero into each of our uh, three conveyors. Now, the hardest part that may sound like it, but it really is the easiest, is now the actual exit conveyors and how to control them. So what we do is we say when we have our conveyor belt on, we turn on our camera one start. When the camera one end signal comes in, then we compare our 
camera to the value of one for our first exit. And if it is equal, then we turn on our selection, our select arm turns, and we set that on. When that, again, when the conveyor belt's on, our arm selection's on, then we have our photo cell one from our exit, it turns on. What we do is reset that arm, and then we will increment our count for that exit belt. Again, exit two is the exact same thing. Conveyors are running, the camera is turned on, when the camera uh, end is seen, when the result is compared with an exit number, and if this matches, then it sets the selection arm for the exit. And once the photo cell for on that exit is seen, it resets that selection. So that is number two. And then number three is an exact, again, an exact duplicate of that. And there's our start, our arm, and then our reset when we have that exit cell come in, or exit photo. And that is the end of the program. So once we have that, we can actually download this. We can then, you can see that we have it, we are connected to our do more uh, uh, simulator. And our simulator basically looks like this. So we won't be using any of the IO yet. There you see right now we're in stop mode. Um, then what we have is we have our uh, we can go to our PLC, we can go to the system configuration. And you can see here that we have our IP port 192.168.129. So that is our IP address that we must use for our machine. Uh, our easy PLC uh, simulator in our box selection machine. So you can also see here that we've enabled our Modbus TCP uh, server. So that's all of our set settings now for our Do More uh, Designer program. So once we have that in place, let's go back to our designer now, or let's go back to our machine. And here we go. And what we'll do is we'll call up our driver and we will select Modbus. And this is all going to be part of now our uh, final step, which is a testing of the program. And we will configure that Modbus driver. And we said our address was 192.168.1 and it's 29. There we go. Port is 502, which is the default for uh, Modbus. Then we're going to say our address is zero. We have 15 inputs, 15 outputs. We have, we're going to put in five analog in, five analog out. Then we're going to say, okay. Once we do that, then all of these um, driver outputs for the PLC inputs and outputs are then specified. We can then assign each one of these to the inputs and all the inputs, to the outputs on the PLC, or we can let it do it automatically by hitting driver, automatic assignment, and it will automatically assign here. Then we'll hit exit, start driver and exit. Now what you'll notice is that we are connected right now to the driver and we can actually view our, our IO. There we go. And what we can do is actually uh, zoom in here a little bit. And what we'll do is when we zoom in, we'll test our control panel first. Here we go. So the first thing we'll do is actually call up our simulator and we'll actually put this into run mode. There we go. And once we're in run mode, the first thing you'll see is that we have our start light on. Then we have a e-stop, you can ch check it out. You see the e-stop com comes on and all of our lights go off. We reset that now. Our start light comes on so we can actually start the machine again. Let's open our door. There you go, the door is open. And you can see our flashing red light now indicating that we have a door open. And what we'll do is just back out a little bit. And so we'll close that door. 
and we're all set to run. So now I'll start run, running the machine. And now we can actually watch as boxes come in and we can actually see the diversion and sending of the boxes down and we can actually see the incrementing of our boxes on each of the uh, exit conveyors that are coming through. We can monitor the analog and you actually see it on the camera system. And our analog outputs here, this is our display that shows us each of the values coming through each of the exits. Now we can also speed this up to ensure that we have, um, or that we can continuously uh, monitor it. Speeding up, slowing down is available. So now that we have a few counts, what we can do is we can actually stop this. When we stop it, now we see that we have our reset light on because we actually have counts on our exit conveyor belt. So let's just start it again. And we continuously run it. And we can also go through the PLC and call up the uh, do more. And what we can actually do is call up our data view. And we can look at that same time, our data view. We can look at our cameras. We can look at our exit counts. And let's just uh, check out that reset as well. So we'll do a zoom in on our control panel again. And let's just stop. Now let's reset our values here. There we go. And you see they're all reset. Now our reset button turns off and now we're back to start again. Let's start it. And we continue our operation. And what we can do is actually just fly around here and actually watch this in operation. And we'll just speed this up a little bit. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. Now for a discount of this software package, which is very reasonably priced and it improves on your learning capability of programming PLCs, then you'll see the link in below on how you can get your discount. Now a new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.